So today has not been a good day. Honestly, the week hasn't been a great week either. The experiments that I need to graduate and get my degree have not been working. The instruments that I've been needing to use so I can do those experiments keep breaking. And I just realized my six month plan to graduation ended a week and a half ago. So it all just kind of hit me today and it just had like one of those like ugh feelings, you know? And I started doing a video where I was gonna do like, you know, my top five most hated books. And I was really getting into like the swing of the rant, but then I realized it just wasn't making me feel good. And I still plan to do that video, maybe just not on such a bad day. And then I realized today is a good day for a good book. So today we're talking about good books for bad days. So the first one we're gonna cover is Let's Pretend This Never Happened by Jenny Lawson. Now this book focuses on Jenny's life and it goes through like a series of mishaps and problems she's run into over her life from her rural upbringing in texas to post-it note wars with her husband it just is a series of bad events but her outlook on it is so positive and so fun that it really is that uplift that i so often crave in my bad days this one is perfect for you you want to hear about someone else's life being horrible but you also don't want to be depressed by it where you kind of have that shared experience of like, yeah, that was kind of terrible. But then you have Jenny's signature twist where it goes from like pretty terrible to downright hilarious. Love this one. So what if you're like, I don't even want to hear about bad days. I want something to completely take me out of the experience. I'm glad you asked. Eleanor Lithiant is Perfectly Fine by Yale Honeyman. Now, this is a book that I was seen splashed everywhere a couple of years ago and I finally picked it up and it ended up being just one of those books you want to hold near and dear to your heart. We follow Eleanor and she is the weird one. She is the one at work who always misses the social cues. She's the one you run into the street where you're just kind of like taken aback by her abruptness and her meticulous way of interacting with people. One chance encounter with a bumbling IT guy by the name of Raymond sends her life spiraling. And she starts to realize spiraling isn't always a bad thing. This one checks all the boxes for me. It's got that quirky main character, that unlikely friendship, the warm, uplifting feeling as she comes out of her shell. This is a great book to read when you just want to feel good about someone else feeling good and becoming who they were meant to be. Now, what if you do not want that? Instead, you want a romance. You want something that you can just sink your teeth into and forget about the outside world. I got a book for you. Well Met by Jen DeLuca. Emily is kind of lost right now. Her boyfriend broke up with her because she wasn't pretty or smart enough. She ended up losing out on her apartment and her plans to go back to college completely fell through. Her sister was severely injured in an accident and Emily decides to come to town and take care of her sister just until her sister gets back on her feet. While she's there, she realizes that her niece has been wanting to sign up for the Renaissance Fair. And being the cool older aunt, Emily decides to sign up with her niece so that her niece can volunteer for this. She was fully prepared to dismiss this, to just do her duty and get out. But the more time she spends with these people from the Renaissance Fair and with the cute guy, the more she realizes that this place might be a good home for her. I know if you're like me, you miss going out to places. The state fair, the festivals, the Renaissance Fair. This book hits those buttons. I just vicariously lived through the characters and watched that romance bloom, watched that renaissance fair happening. And I really like the freshness of this romance. I don't read a ton of romances, but the ones I do seem kind of formulaic. This one had a different twist to it, and I ended up loving it for that. 
what if you are like, okay, I get that there's an adult romance, but I really want is the nostalgia from the YA section. I have the perfect book for you. To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. Laura Jean has never ever told a boy that she likes him, but she has told them that when she does not like them through letter. Essentially, whenever she falls out of love with a boy, she writes him a letter about all the reasons why. She liked them and why she fell out of love. And she sealed them, she addressed them, and I think you know where this is going. Her little sister mailed them. So now Laura Jean is scrambling to get these letters back and to try and regain control of her life. This book is perfect when you want that giddy young adult feel. Laura Jean is not a typical heroine. She's not super tough. She's not super strong. But what she does have is heart. And that's why I love this one. Because it gives you that heart and that just joy at being alive and experiencing love for your first time. Now, what if you want to go even younger? AKA, you don't care about romance. You don't care about anything, but just a really good and touching story. Wild Robot by Peter Brown. Now, this one follows Roz, and Roz is a robot, and when she first opens her eyes, she's in the wilderness, which is not where a robot is supposed to be. And she's surrounded by animals, she's in a very inhospitable place, and she has to survive and figure out how to thrive in an environment she's not made for. This book is amazing. Like, I honestly would recommend it no matter the age. It is so heartwarming and sweet and gives you that warm, glowy feeling when you read it. Sometimes your bad day needs a book with a lot of heart in it, and that's a wild robot. And sometimes your bad day needs a book where the heroine will kick, punch, and kill first and ask questions later. That's Gideon the Ninth. Now this is a crazy story involving democracy, necromancy, not democracy, I'm learning here, involving necromancy, magic, and outer space. It sounds weird, but it works so well. Gideon has spent her entire life on the ninth planet, shunned by pretty much everybody, and she's also just spent that entire time trying to get off planet and escape. However, she keeps getting foiled by Haro the Ninth. Now, Haro is pretty much the princess slash future ruler of their planet. And the most recent escaped attempt, Haro catches Gideon and brokers a deal. If Gideon will help Haro go to this competition between all of the leaders of the various planets, Haro will grant Gideon her freedom. From there, the wildness begins. Now, this is a great book when you just want to sink in to a new world and not think at all about your current one. It is fast paced. There are so many things that happen and it's amazing because of that. It like sucks you right in and it has taken no prisoners. Definitely, definitely recommend this one when you just want to be distracted. Now what if you want that supernatural aspect but you also want a lighter one? I'm talking about paranormalcy. Now, Paranorm Paranormal C is one of the books that I reread every few years just because I love the characters so much. We follow Evie. Evie has a special power where she can see behind glamours. There's an undead vampire walking around looking really cute, looking really hot. Evie can see through that and see the rotting corpse beneath. And because of that, she works with the government to round up the dangerous supernaturals, Vagum and Tagum. However, the more she's doing this, the more she starts to have some questioning moments. Some decisions are being made that she just isn't entirely sure if she agrees with. And when they find a new boy, a boy who is practically invisible, even underneath his glamour, Evie is going to have to make some tough decisions. 
Now this one I love because of Evie's character. She is bright, she is hilarious, and she has this outlook on life that just isn't too serious. And that is what really draws me to this book when I am feeling down. I need an injection of Evie's personality to bring me back up. So what if you want a book that is firmly in reality, but you just want a good, fun, and hilarious time? You want banter, boyfriend material. Now this one came out just this year, but it's already a favorite of mine and I'm itching for a reread. This one follows the story of Luke, the son of two aging rock stars, as he's trying to figure out his life. He is told by his boss that unless he settles down that his job is honestly in danger. Oliver is a straight-laced lawyer who really is not Luke's type. And yet, whenever they're in the same room, sparks fly. This is one of those books where you know at the beginning where it's going to end up. But the journey to it is perfect. The way the characters interact and the way they have this banter going between themselves, it's amazing. It's honestly, it has made me laugh out loud so many times. The way they bicker and argue, it never is too much. I always want more of it. And if none of this works, I always go to my one of my absolutely favorite series, one that I reread constantly. I'm talking about Harry Potter, but the illustrated ones. The illustrated ones are for a bad day. Now, Harry Potter, obviously everyone knows this one by now. Boy Wizard, Magical Adventure. It's one of my favorite, favorite books. No matter how many times I read it, I just want to go back to that first book and just restart that journey. Now, if you have not picked up the illustrated versions for these books, I just, I just, they're amazing. They're just incredible. The artist for it, he, he's stunning. These are not just like little cartoon doodles. These are full out paintings, full color, full page, gorgeous. And they're just a whole new way to interact with the book. And it's just, it's something that brings so much joy to me. And whenever I'm having a bad day, I can kind of catch up with these characters, see how they're doing, get that little hit of nostalgia. And soon enough, that bad day turns into a good day. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for letting me share my bad day and my good day books. And I'm just wishing you a really good day, week, month, year, forever. <laughs> thank you so much for watching and happy reading. Super quick update. So if you saw last week's video, I made a bioactive vivarium for my brand new snake, Nagini. She's a three month old Mexican black king snake and she is honestly loving it. I've seen her out so much more this week and she's still a little squirmy when I hold her, but she is doing so well. And yeah, that's it. Okay, so have a great day and happy reading. Bye.